Comment all to martial arts reacts video. Uh, Kempo techniques don't work. Well, I've been saying that. Uh, I got probably 25, 30 Kempo sucks videos in the playlist. Go check those out. Uh, this is in response to Art of One Dojo. Art of One Dojo and I have been going back and forth. And now this guy from Combat Self-Defense has gotten into the mix. But he has... Th this video is actually older than my Art of One uh, Dojo videos. This one is from two, th uh, two years ago. So let's check out and see what Combat Self-Defense has got to say about a response of Art of One Dojo that says... Kemp Kempo techniques don't work because Art of Window just says they do. Here's ultimately my problem with Kempo techniques. They are the CrossFit of martial arts. You're not yep. practicing them to get better at fighting. You practice the Kempo techniques to get better at Kempo techniques. <laughs> oh, I got to remember that one. You, <laughs> you get, you practice Kempo techniques to get better at Kempo techniques. <laughs> I love Fast forward through his bumper, maybe. Now, Mr. Dan is a Kempo black belt. He's a Kempo instructor. And yep. he says that Kempo techniques work, which means no. this video must argue that they don't. Well. Well. <laughs> Before we move on, we should probably define what a Kempo technique is. Obviously, it's techniques. any self-defense technique that's performed in a Kempo or Kempo-related style. Not much is a given. But yeah. more specifically, Kempo techniques are defined as long, complicated sequences as a response yeah. to one to two strikes. Meaning, Yeah, very, very complicated. Look at that. That's Mr. Speakman. And the guy throws one punch, and Speakman's hit him in like 20 times. You have to be justified, you have to be justified in your self-defense. Your opponent throws a punch and you respond with five, six, seven or eight different movements before you finally finish the technique. Obviously, you only have so many hours in the day to train your students. You only have one to two hours, maybe three times a week. And you have a lot of material that needs to get covered. You gotta teach them how yeah. to strike. You gotta teach them how to roll. You gotta teach them how to throw. You gotta teach them how to... You gotta teach them the, the basics. Uh, the foot maneuvers, everything. Fall. There's a lot of stuff you gotta learn in the martial arts. And you can take the time to do each of those things individually or you can create a choreographed routine that allows them to do multiple things all at once. So You're gonna throw you... a single punch and you are gonna high block, side That's what I just said, choreographed routine. Kick, throw them to the ground and roll over the back. You're covering multiple things all at once. It's a cool way to get a lot of information into the class. And we can argue back and forth about which way is better and I have my opinion and I'm sure you know what it is, but the fact is putting it all in a sequence is a valid way to practice techniques. A lot of people argue that you don't see Kempo techniques expressed in fighting or sparring. Mr. Dan addressed this in his video. He said the reason that is, is because Kempo techniques are not meant to be done against trained, experienced fighters. They're oh, really? I'll have to remember that, Mr. Dan. Well, see, that's my point right there. Uh, Dan from Art of Dojo is saying that, then I need to remember when I make my videos to comment on that because he's trying to say just the opposite towards me, saying Kempotex do, do work against trained fighters. They're not meant to be done in consensual violence. They're meant to be done in self-defense, spontaneous assault against an untrained attacker. I would argue that 99% of people who are sparring right now are untrained fighters. I would say yep. most people who practice martial arts are not trained fighters. They're just kind of skilled amateurs. They're people oh, who yeah. are good enough at inflicting violence, but they're not really the best at it. Most people sparring right now are untrained fighters. And if Kempo techniques are meant to be done against untrained fighters, then we should be seeing Kempo techniques done over and over again in every single gym across the country, right? And you could argue that we do. You see individual portions of the Kempo techniques being expressed. But the question has never been, will these individual movements work? Obviously, swinging your hand as fast as you can across someone's face. Is, you're eventually going to hit a target. That's what this guy uh, for combat self-defense is saying. You, you know, if, if, if you swing a hundred times, I think it's given. Will hurt them. Grabbing them by the hair and throwing them to the ground will hurt. Kicking someone in yep. the groin hurts. That's not the question here. The question is, will the actual choreographed routine, the six to seven step process, will that work? Can you pull that off? 
I can already hear the Kempo black belt typing away right now. That's not the point of the Kempo technique. You're not meant to do it in its entirety. That's what I was, that's why I'm laughing because I just thought to myself, keyboard warriors, keyboard warriors. You're meant to take individual portions of the technique and apply as necessary. Sometimes you don't perform the technique exactly as you did it in the ideal phase of your training. Sometimes you have to modify it because your opponent changes the way they attack you, you're closer to them, farther away from them, maybe you don't have the same weapon available to you. It changes based on the situation. Here's what I would argue. If you can pull off portions of a Kempo technique in sparring with relative routine success, but you have to modify it somewhat, why don't you just always practice it the way that you've modified it too? Sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If I am teaching a student to block and then do, but a modification is just to move out of the way and just do the back fist and don't actually block, why wouldn't I teach that to all the students? Why wouldn't I just move out of the way and do the back fist? Modification. Maybe there should be a base expression of a technique, but if you can't perform a movement the way you do with a compliant partner against a non-compliant partner, then maybe you should just change it to the way that you can perform it. But ultimately, exactly pressure points or pressure testing. I've been saying that in all of my Campus Sucks videos. Go check it out on the playlist. Ultimately, that's a circular argument, and we're going to get exhausted just talking about it. Here's ultimately. I love the fact that he does like this voiceover for his own punches and kicks, because like. I mean, I could react to his, some of his punches and kicks are not all the best in, in this video the, when he's wearing the shorts and uh, t-shirt. My problem with Kempo techniques, they are the CrossFit of martial arts. CrossFit is fitness for its own sake. You're not picking up heavy weights to get stronger. You're picking up heavy weights to get better at picking up heavy weights. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not picking up this cell phone to answer it. I want to pick up the cell phone. <laughs> Kempo techniques are the same thing. Kempo techniques are doing Kempo techniques not to get better at fighting, but to get better, better at, Kempo at Kempo techniques. techniques. That's not what fighting actually looks like, whether we're talking no. about consensual violence or non-consensual violence. It just doesn't look as ideal as it does when you're practicing. That's why guys who do Kempo techniques like to look so badass when they're doing them, because for them, that's as good as it's gonna get. Yep. That's why they uh, tap themselves, you know? Because when they're recording, you hear this, you know? And then, like, Speakman right here, uh, <clears throat> they make all those <clears throat> sounds. See? Now, Kempo has an <clears throat> answer for this. They have their three phases. They have the ideal phase, which is probably what you think about when we're talking about Kempo techniques. They have the what if what phase, if phase, which is <laughs> what if he accidentally throws a low punch instead of a high punch? How can I possibly modify it to make it work for me? And that's not how fighting works. Now, this is a how fighting works. I love the deep uh, edited voice. Fun exercise to do in the dojo, realizing that an attack coming in from the left side, whether it's a hand or a foot, doesn't really matter. The response needs to be the same, but you don't want to think about fighting as an equation. It's not an if then situation. If you think he does this and then I do that, but if he does this, then I'll do that instead. You're wasting too much time. You're yeah, you waste too much time trying to think of what the person's doing because you have no idea what the person's doing. And since you have no idea what the person's doing from what the person is doing, if you have no idea what the person is doing. Creating a hesitancy in fighting. Here's what I really think about Kempo techniques. I think they are a way to draw out a student's training time. Yeah, uh, that's why you have the belt system, you know? You drain, you drain it out. All right, here's here's money for your orange purple belt. Here's money for your uh, blue belt. Yep, this guy's really on to something. I really like this guy. Now, obviously, it's a good way to condense a lot of information into one small sequence, but it's also a good way to keep someone from actually learning how to. Fight. Your hook punches are here. They need to be up. Hit the jaw. Fight, and I hear what you're saying. Well, a brand new beginner shouldn't be thrown into sparring right away or shouldn't be thrown into fighting right away. 
And actually, yes, they should. The argument that I have for throwing a new uh, student into sparring right away is, and learn as much as you can, as fast as you can, is because you never know when you're going to get attacked. So you need to be able to get used to getting hit. You need to be able to get used to throwing a punch, throwing a kick, you know, doing throws, doing takedowns. Because the first day that you come to a karate school, you could actually be leaving that karate school and get attacked. But if you just learned how to take a hit, and if you just learned sparring on your very first day, you might actually come out on top if you're attacked on the very first day of your first day of training. Way, I get that. I agree with that. But I don't think the solution to that problem is doing Kempo techniques. Now, no. obviously, compliant partner drilling is important. It's something that should happen in every single martial arts program. But... I disagree with that. Compliant means it's choreographed. Techniques don't work. I'm really surprised he said that. Wow. Let's find out what else he has to say. To the degree that you're doing six, seven, or even ten responses to one specific strike, I think now we're reaching into the point of negative returns. Because yes, we say this is not how the technique is meant to be performed, but I've never really seen a Kempo instructor who then does the next step and actually makes it something that's applicable in real fighting. It's True. always the technique as it's shown, maybe a few modifications here and there, but never drawn out to full contact fighting. Now you can Yeah, they do just do extensions or what ifs. You could argue that's where the student themselves has to apply on their own in sparring. Take down. But again, I think this is drawing Stop. out the time it takes someone to get good at a skill. I'm not saying that Kempo instructors are purposely slowing down your progress to get more money out of you. Yeah, I'm are. just saying Some. that method of practice is not the most effective way to get better at fighting. Now here's the thing. I'm giving Kempo a lot of flack for having unrealistic training practices, but... Hey, so do I. This is not exclusive to Kempo. Boxing, no. kickboxing, Muay Thai, those all... Did you notice that he's talking about traditional martial arts? That's what I've been talking about in all my videos. Traditional marks, martial arts does not work. Have 12 strike combinations that are not meant to be things you can pull off in fighting, but rather meant to teach you how to flow with a sequence. If you try to pull off a 15 strike combination in a real fight, you're either very, very good or you're delusional. And yes, these are all valuable things you can I, will, I would go with delusional. ...do in a fight, but you're not going to pull them off as shown in a drill. Every martial art nope. has their version of unrealistic training practices. You have to work very hard to find a school that doesn't. But it's not a question of how realistic is this training, it's to what degree is it unrealistic. Is it one degree separated from fighting? Two degrees? Three? Or has it gone so far off the deep end that we're really just doing movie choreography at this point? If that's what you want to do, that's fine. Let's just be realistic. I would go with movie choreography. That's what a lot of Kempo and other traditional martial arts has uh, come down to. But how many how many times are you gonna kick did him? I ever Punch him. Answer the question? I don't think I did. I think there's a time and a place for Kempo techniques. Now you can go a little bit off the deep end. If you're responding with 10 to 12 different strikes based on one punch and expecting your opponent to not move at all, yeah, we're kind of playing in a fantasy world. Not kind of, you are. That's what drives me nuts. You throw one punch, you lay it out there, and you let the person do whatever it is that they want to do. That's not real. But if you're teaching valid concepts and you're keeping it to something that could maybe be done in a fight, then yes, I think that is a viable way to practice. I don't think it's something you should do all the time, and I don't think it's something you should put that much stock into, but in terms of teaching a lot of movements and condensing it all into one sequence, there's a place for Kempo techniques. Now, I do want to make clear, in my opinion, sparring or fighting are the ultimate expression of a martial arts validity. If you can't pull it off in a real-time, high-stress situation, the way you've been practicing it, you need to change the way you're practicing it. You don't necessarily need to change what you're practicing. Basically, whatever you do inside the dojo, you should be doing outside the dojo. But you need to change the way you're practicing it. 
So if you're having to defend Kempo techniques by saying, well, that's not the way it's supposed to be done, or it's gonna modify in real time, or any number of excuses you have to make, maybe you're making more excuses for a thing that would just be easier to change. Anyways, you guys, if you enjoyed this video, and if you're looking I did enjoy this video. And while he's talking about subscribing, please subscribe to my channel and go over and subscribe to Combat Self-Defense. I am definitely going to be subscribed. All right, so that's my martial arts reaction video from Kempo Techniques Don't Work, response to Art of One Dojo. I will see you guys in the next Martial Arts Reacts.